guys today I'm reviewing another James Bond film and this one's called Goldfinger do you expect me to talk no Mr. Bond I expect you to die Goldfinger came out in 1964 and is the third Bond film to be made and the third starring Sean Connery it's based on the 1959 novel by Ian Fleming the screenplay was by Richard Meerborn and Paul Dean, produced by Harry Saltzman and Albert R. Broccoli, and the director was Guy Hamilton, and this was the first of four Bond films he made. The others were Diamonds Are Forever in 1971, Live and Let Die in 1973, and The Man with the Golden Gun in 1974. Cinematography was by Ted Moore, it was edited by Peter Hunt, who would later be the director of On a Majesty's Sacred Service in 1969. Music was by John Barry. Shirley Bassey sings the famous title song, and she would do two others, Downs Are Forever and Moonraker. The film runs 110 minutes, and it was the first blockbuster Bond film. It cost three million to make, and that's the equivalent of the first two Bond films put together. And it was a massive success, making 125 million. Many polls that have been done, rating the highest gross and bond films, Goldfinger always comes about second or third in the list, adjusted for inflation, just behind Thunderball and Skyfall. It was the first bond film to get an Academy Award for Best Sound Editing. It became a critical success and is regarded as one of the most iconic bond films. Ked Adams designed the sets. It also introduces the Austin Martin DB5. The Austin Martin would later be dubbed the most famous car in the world and would return in the film Thunderball. The success of the film would inspire many spy movies and parodies of James Bond, like Our Man Flint and the Dane Martin Matt Helm films and TV shows like Mission Impossible. Sean Connery was 34 years old when he made the film, and Honor Blackman was 38 years old. So there was a four-year difference, which was unusual, having the Bond girl older than Bond. The film stars Sean Connery, Honor Blackman, Gert Forb, Shirley Ayton, Tanya Mallet, Harold Sakata, Sek Linder as Felix, and the regulars Bernard Lee, Lewis Maxwell, and Desmond Llewellyn. So this is the start of more fantastic plots, where the first two films were more serious espionage spy films, where this one's a bit more elaborate. So the film's all about Goldfinger wanting to rob Fort Knox, and at times it's almost surreal. There's some really strange moments in this film, for instance when she's covered in gold paint, and it sets the blueprint of how Bond films would later follow the formula of this film because it has all the elements of the Bond series and it injects a bit more humour where the first two films were more serious. Another interesting thing is there's a different director for this film, Guy Hamilton, whereas Terence Young did the first two films and you can tell the difference between the two directors. Guy Hamilton did four Bond films altogether and he, he, he likes to inject humour into them. There's some really funny Bond films that he made, the, probably the most humorous in the series. Whereas Terence Young, he made three Bond films and they're, they're, they're much more serious. They're very different to each other. This film has great characters. Sean Connery's on top form. He gives a more balanced performance. He's still serious, but he injects a little bit of light humour to his character, which is nice. That's partly to do with the director, Guy Hamilton. So probably his best two performances are from Russia We Love and this one. And Honor Blackman's really good as well. This is just after she was in The Avengers from 1962 to 1964. She played Kathy Gale to Honor Blackman's characters called Pussy Galore. <laughs> hey, hell, what a bloody name she has. Bloody Pussy Galore. Bloody Bond gets plenty bloody Pussy Galore. Lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? In the films? And she's actually four years older than Sean Connery. So she was 38. And usually Bond's way older than his Bond girl. Where in this case she's actually older than him. It's also interesting that the film suggests that she might be a lesbian. 
However, it doesn't go too far with this idea. So there's lines where Bond's flirting with her and she says she's immune to his charms. Bert Forbes, Goldfinger, he's a great character and Bond takes an instant dislike to him. When he first sees him, he pulls this face when he sees him. He cheats at cards, he cheats at golf and he, he's a bit of a sadistic character actually. The famous scene where Bond's captured and he's tied down and there's a laser beam gonna cut him in half. And when you actually think about it, he's gonna actually cut Bond in half. And it's a really gross, really sadistic scene when you think about it. It's almost worse than the bloody Saw movies. <laughs> Having someone cut in half with a laser beam. And it's so close to Bond's groin. Really tense scene. So the film Goldfinger has these implied moments of violence. So Goldfinger has an obsession with gold. And this is emphasised in costume design. Where the character has a look of gold to his costume. Even in the background of the film there's little bits of gold and colours. And all of this gives messages to the audience about gold. Subconscious messaging. There's the famous scene where Shelley Eaton's covered in gold paint. And it's a really surreal scene. She's lying on the bed and after Bond recovers, after being knocked unconscious, he sees her. And it almost asks the question, was Goldfinger there at the time when she was painted gold? Because it seems a very strange thing to do. Did he get off on it while Bond was unconscious? Hey, Phil, I bet bloody Goldfinger had a good time with her. Hope the dirty bugger didn't get any paint on him. Instead of bloody being Carl Goldfinger, he'll be bloody Carl Golden Balls. <laughs> Golden Harp. <laughs> Odd Job's a great henchman as well, really powerful. He's in the same league as Jaws. There's a great scene where he uses his bowler hat to kill the other sister. And I also love the, the epic fight at the end. Him and Bond battling in Fort Knox. And it's great how Bond manages to overcome him by using his hat, electrocuting him. All the regulars are back, M, Money, Penny, and Q. I especially like the scene with Q where he shows Bond at Austin Martin. And the brilliant line where he says, I never joke about me work. Really one of the best um, scenes featuring Q. Now, yeah, why not? Because you release this section of the roof and engage and fire the passenger ejector seat. Whoosh. Ejector seat? You're joking. I never joke about my work, 007. However, I found Felix Leiter a bit miscast. Not one of the best Felix Leiters. So the pre-titles are okay, nothing special. And then you get onto the actual title sequence featuring the cast over images of a golden girl in the famous Shirley Bassey song. Very iconic. And actually on Blu-ray you can actually say the bloody titles. Whereas um, on DVD it was too dark really. So some of the best bits in the film, I love the car chase. Brilliant how he uses all the gadgets and the ejector seat. Brilliant. <laughs> the Ken Adams sets are brilliant as well, especially the Fort Knox set. It almost looks real as though they're actually in Fort Knox. Oddly enough, although the film's highly praised, it's only recently that it's slowly starting to get criticised by a modern audience. A lot of fans are saying that Bond's captured too long in the film. The majority of the film is just a passive observer. And there is some truth to that. Where I quite like it when Bond's captured. Some of the best moments are when Bond's captured by the villain and the villain tells him his plans. So I didn't really have a problem with that. But he is captured quite a long time in the film. So... Uh, I can kind of see both points of views. However, the objecting to the scene where Bond tries to kiss on a black man's character, Pussy Galore, and they say it's almost like rape. I totally disagree with that. 
I always found the, the scene more like just fun fighting really, a bit of flirting. Bond knows that she really fancies them. And if she had got hysterical, he, he'd back off. So I found no um, evidence that he was actually raping her. He was just trying to give her a kiss. So these modern audiences, they get really upset over nothing. Yeah, hell, these bloody woke fannies today. Bloody Bond wasn't raping her. He didn't have his bloody hand down in knickers. <laughs> so overall I thought this was a classic Bond film. The 60s were probably the best period of Bond films. And there's three brilliant Bond films, one after another. From Rush Will Love, Goldfinger and Thunderball. Three classics. So out of ten, what would I give it? Have a guess. Ten! Ten out of ten. Solid Bond classic. What did you think, boys? Did you like it? I thought it was a bloody classic film, Phil. Gets 10 out of 10. Okay, everybody, bye. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye. Bye. Felix. <laughs> Felix, how are you? Dink, meet Felix Leiter. Hello. Felix, say hello to Dink. Hi, Dink. Dink, say goodbye to Felix. Hmm? Uh, man talk. <laughs>